Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. I hope everybody's day is going great. Mine is, and yesterday was pretty crazy. You guys are probably clicking on the title right now of this video and thinking, wow, what the hell happened, Michael? Explain. Let us know. So I'm going to start right off the bat and tell you guys the explanation of the title and a brief description of what exactly went on. So two days ago, during the Houston Outlaws Los Angeles Gladiators match, it was halftime. David Pay, D. Pay, the coach of the Los Angeles Gladiators, apparently he was walking to try to get to his team, and he physically bumped into the players from the Houston Outlaws. And the next day, David Pay, Los Angeles Gladiators, they put out a statement about the situation. We'll go ahead and cover this in depth, but what makes this story very interesting and why you guys are probably wondering why the title says what it says is because there's been a ton of speculation about this situation. Slasher has come out, made some tweets about it. There have also been players in the Overwatch League who have said things about it. And David Pay's intentions and his coaching style has really come under fire. So I'm going to cover this entire situation up to this point. The statements, the tweets from everybody, people's reactions, and I'll also give my personal opinion on it because actually what some of you guys might not know is D. Pay was the coach for Kangarna. So I worked with him for several months so I might have some good insight on this as well. I'm also going to be covering the games from yesterday. They were very exciting. We had some really close sets and I'm going to get in depth on some of those. So if you guys are new here, please consider dropping a subscription on the channel. I upload daily Overwatch League content, whether it's drama, recaps, power rankings, predictions, and a whole bunch of other stuff. As well as this, I'm also live on Twitch after every Overwatch League day. I call it the post Overwatch League stream. We talk about the games. You guys can also ask me any questions. It's a real good time. I'll leave some clips at the end of this video that you guys can check out and see what the stream is like. All right, so let's just hop into the David Pay Los Angeles Gladiators situation. So yesterday during the afternoon, they came out with this statement saying, during halftime of the match against Houston Outlaws last night, Gladiators head coach David D. Pay Pay accidentally bumped into Outlaws players backstage. He wanted to share this with the players and our fans. Yesterday during the Outlaws match, I inadvertently bumped into two of the Outlaws players. I hadn't been watching where I was going, I was distracted thinking about what to say to our team for King's Row, but I wanted to apologize immediately. I apologize to their players immediately after the game and Tyrong shortly after. I am sincerely sorry for my actions and assure you that there was no malicious intent. Even though it was an accident, it was still unprofessional me to shoulder bump players from another team. So again, I am sorry. So they dropped this statement midday yesterday and a lot of us were really wondering what this had to do with what exactly happened. It was kind of confusing because if you just had like a shoulder bump with someone, why would you have to make a statement about it? Just say sorry to the players, my bad guys, you know, move on. Someone made a comment on the situation which really sums up everything for me. He said this, I assumed it was a joke. Why would someone ever feel the need to apologize for bumping shoulders in a corridor with someone? Was he running 30 kilometers per hour and dislocated Rockus' arm or something? There's got to be more to the story than just shoulder bumping. This comment really sums it up for me because there should be no need for a statement of this type of situation unless there was more to it. And he made it very, very clear that he was sorry. He said, I am sincerely sorry for my actions. I sure it won't happen again. I am so, so sorry again, which makes me believe that there is more to this situation. Now, the next part of this story came from XQC. He was streaming. He heard about the news and he gave his response on it. I'll go ahead and play that clip now. You want to know my real take on this? So since I know Dipe and I, I know his attitude and how he talks and how he uh, how he gets angry sometimes and stuff, I would not like to be judged this way. So I'm not going to go down that path. But I think it's very likely that it was purposely done. But I'm not going to assume it was done by, on purpose, right? Because I know him, and. I've seen him uh, punish his players a couple times in the in the corridors. Okay, so very interesting response there from XQC. Definitely something to take with a grain of salt, right? Uh, his body language was really off. He was making weird faces at the end of the statement when he said he saw some stuff from David Pay. Like, what exactly did you see? It really left a lot of people wondering what the hell was going on. And this clip pretty much surfaced everywhere. It was on official Reddit for Overwatch. It was on TMZ Overwatch Reddit. It, again, it was everywhere. Everybody has seen this clip. And now instead of thinking this was a joke, this left a lot of us thinking, oh, wow, did DP actually bump into these players maliciously? And what exactly did XQC see? Because again, his body language in this clip leads us to think that it was something pretty severe. So a lot of questions and red flags were being raised. 
Now, what made this story even go to the next level were these tweets that came from Slasher. He said this on Twitter. From what I understand, D-Pay initiated enough physical contact against Muma and Jake at halftime of the Outlaws Gladiators match to warrant this response. And apparently, me contacting Blizzard slash Overwatch League to confirm this and tweet this story early prompted LA Gladiators to release this statement. Me asking around for people to confirm this story and Blizzard forcing LA Gladiators or team feeling pressured to put out this ridiculous statement early so they can beat me to it is classic esports. Those who I spoke to about this situation are not surprised that DPay would be involved in this, and for the statement to read as accidental slash unintentional is misleading. So apparently Slasher has done some digging, he's talked to some players, some people involved in this situation, or just involved with DPay in general, and they've come out and said that it makes sense that DPay was involved in something like this, they could definitely see this happening, and apparently some people that might have been involved in this situation told Slasher that it was misleading to say that this was accidental or unintentional. And like I said, these tweets really leveled up this story, and we went from speculating to going absolutely nuts. People now thinking David Pay, he's abusive to other players. The guy's an absolute jerk, he's a bully. Really, honestly, some crazy stuff being said about David, and it definitely has gotten out of hand. I find this situation very weird because, as I said at the beginning of the video, I have personal experience with David. He was my coach for several months. We worked together for a long time, and based off of my personal experiences, I would never think that David was a guy who would try to physically, emotionally, or mentally, you know, hurt somebody, whether that's intentionally bumping into the Houston Outlaws players, or in any way being abusive to any of his players. I mean, of course I've had experiences with him where he was, you know, loud and angry at our team, but it was warranted. He was doing it for a reason, so he could help us become better and help us focus up and win whatever we needed to win at the time. I never thought any of it was malicious at all, so seeing this whole entire situation spread and be speculated about is really weird for me. Of course, I was not part of this situation, and I definitely don't know what actually happened. But if I had to take a guess right now, I don't think it was intentional. And as for XQC and everything he said in that clip, it was kind of taken out of context. Let's play this other clip, which is XQC explaining the situation he was talking about in that previous clip five minutes later. I've known Deepa so since, um, because I think he wanted to be on Envy at some point and he wanted to be on uh, Denial at some point too. Right? So I had experiences with him in the first place. He's like a like a really fin high ego guy, and he's like all crazy sometimes, and that's fine. But when I was in practice at some point, I was in the corridors, and it's a corridor like that, right? And there's a little bit to the left, right, and there's a, there's a sofa there, and there's a player sitting there. I saw his legs, and I didn't see who he was. I think it was even two players. And all I saw was Deepay at the end of the corridor because our door's right there at the end. And it was like, a, it was like, and yelling, dude. We were in scrims yelling, and we could, we could hear him from across the fucking room. With a, and our door was like soundproofed. So now it seems the experience that XQC was talking about in the first clip was just David yelling at his players. Sure, maybe he was yelling very loudly and he was very upset, but XQC definitely talked it up in that first clip, made it seem like it was something more than what it actually was. So now I think we're in a situation where we don't really know exactly what happened, but we can speculate, we can form our own opinions. Again, I shared my opinion. I don't think David would really do anything intentionally, like bumping into another player. And if it was unintentional, those players could still think that it was intentional. So it's kind of like a, he did this, he did that game. As for his coaching style and maybe being a loud, aggressive person, I think that's honestly a good thing. If we look at this and then we look at Kai Kai's coaching style for the Dallas Fuel, someone who's very passive and lets his players walk all over him, hasn't worked out very well for him, has it guys? And then we look at David Pay and how the Los Angeles Gladiators are doing. Maybe you do need to be assertive with your players. Maybe you do need to demand that they follow and listen to everything you say. And when there's a situation that blows up, you need to control it as a coach. Because if you don't, it can end up spiraling out of control. If your players aren't scared of consequences of doing something crazy, then you're not doing your job. Now, of course, I understand why this situation is still a little weird and doesn't make sense, because why would d Pay and the Los Angeles Gladiators feel the need to come out and make a response, a statement? And why was David so sincerely sorry if he just accidentally bumped into somebody? It does make it seem like d Pay was running 20 kilometers per hour and dislocated Rockus's shoulder. Like, was he sprinting? I, I just don't get it. He must have, like, knocked somebody down or something for it to be this severe. Because if he just shoulder bumped somebody, like, you know, where, like, they just walked by each other and their shoulders tapped or something, there would be no need for a response like this. 
and XQC and Slasher's stories definitely didn't help D-Pain, but I think this is where we need to leave this situation. There's not really any more we can talk about. We can form our own opinions and speculate, but until somebody comes out who was actually involved and say what they thought happened, we won't really have any more insight. So we'll leave it at that. Let's move on to the next section of the video where we talk about the games from yesterday. So let's go ahead and talk about that first set, the Los Angeles Gladiators, Florida Mayhem. They really put on a show for us. Very exciting set. Tavik and Logix, dude, these guys have been playing out of their mind now for two weeks straight. And of course, the entirety of the Los Angeles Gladiators have been playing out of their minds for two weeks straight. So seeing both these teams come together was really awesome. We started off on Volskaya. This map was back and forth. Both teams looked like they were really strong on defense, but the attackers came through near the very end. Almost every single point was captured in overtime on this map. So it was very exciting. And we, of course, ended up in that draw. I really do believe that the Florida Mayhem looked better on this map but we saw some heroics from sure for that helped them bring it back into their favor and eventually get the draw so going into the next map nepal the score was still 0-0 and once we got onto nepal nothing changed it was still very close that first round went 99-99 crazy fights back and forth and florida mayhem were able to take it due to logics and tavik once again performing out of their minds also an unsung hero for the Florida Mayhem has been Manitin. He's been playing great throughout this run as well. Swoosh obviously is not playing like the worst main tank in the league. He stepped up a little bit, but we did see him get exposed in this match again. So Florida Mayhem took the early lead in the series 1-0. We moved into the third map, which was Hollywood and the Gladiators. These guys are running some crazy strats, dude. If they lose this map, they lose the series. What do they do? They run Hydration on Doomfist, May. Surefour is on Reaper, Tracer, Widowmaker, Shaz is on Moira, they're running a mixture of Dive and... I don't even know, the comp is just crazy! These guys are so exciting to watch, the match is on the line, and they bring this, and they come out on top, which is absolutely crazy. It really shows how much preparation they're putting into these games. As for the Florida Mayhem, they decided to take Logics out for Hollywood, they did this in their previous game, they put Zappies on, ran triple tank with Manitan on the Roadhog, Zappies on D.Va, and it didn't seem to work out again. The Los Angeles Gladiators, they had the counter for it. They ran the Reaper May. Doomfist, I, I still can't get over how Hydration basically played Doomfist throughout this whole map, and they destroyed them. This tied up the series 1-1, guys. We're moving on to Route 66, where the series would be decided. This was another close map. Fights being decided in overtime. Gladiators had a decent push. They got it almost to the end of the map. Then the Florida Mayhem went to attack, and Gladiators showed up on defense. They were clutching the set, and they closed it out with a hold on second, and the Los Angeles Gladiators now on a four-game winning streak where they've looked really good, really unpredictable, and just super flexible. Something to really point out about this match and the statistics, though, it was extremely close, guys. Fights went 36-37 to in the Florida Mayhem's favor, so they won more team fights in this game. As for the kills, it was 185 for the Los Angeles Gladiators and 173 for the Florida Mayhem. So based off of watching the games and looking at the stats, you could really see it was very close. Either team could have taken it. And Florida Mayhem, they do look pretty impressive at this point. I think going into Stage 3, they might be able to pick up some major wins and even, who knows, make a push for Stage 3 playoffs. As for the Los Angeles Gladiators, they have a very important week coming up. They're currently sitting at 6-2 and two and 3rd on the standings. If they go 2-0 and zero against the Philadelphia Fusion and Boston Uprising, they'll finish at 8-2, and two, more than likely making the playoffs. If they lose one of these games, they're more than likely not going to make it. And there are some situations where if they go 2-0, and zero, they still don't make it depending on if the London Spitfire went out and win most of their maps. I'm definitely interested in seeing the Los Angeles Gladiators go up against some better teams like Seoul Dynasty, New York Excelsior, and even the London Spitfire again. Because yeah, they've been running these wonky comps and strategies that are throwing a lot of teams off guard. I think the preparation from a team like New York Excelsior, Seoul Dynasty, and London Spitfire will really be ready and prepared for this. But who knows, maybe it catches them off guard and they can win this whole thing. Stage 2 playoffs are going to be very interesting and I'm extremely excited for them. Moving on to the next set, we have the San Francisco Shock going up against the London Spitfire. And it was an interesting set, it really was. Blood and Spitfire, they had Prophet, Jester, Hu Yal, and Hu Reg in there from the GC Busan side of the roster, and then Nuss and Bidosin. Obviously, Prophet and Jester are the major stars of this team alongside Birdring, so it was interesting not seeing Birdring in there. And Hu Reg, this guy, I don't know, man. 
sure, he did good in Apex Season 4, but so far, he really isn't holding his own in the Overwatch League. He went 22-36 and 36 in this match. Negative 14. I mean, that's not very good. Profit, Gesture, Bedosin, they looked great. They carried this game. On the side of San Francisco Shock, Bebe had a fantastic set. Whether he was on the Tracer, Widowmaker, or Soldier, he was playing really good throughout the set. Dante was sort of quiet this game. He only had 28 kills. It was good that he didn't die too much, but he definitely seemed a lot more quiet than in his previous sets. Similar to the last set, too, it was extremely close in kills and fights. Looking at the fights, it was 28 in favor of the London Spitfire and 29 in favor of the San Francisco Shock. SF Shock won more team fights in London in this set, but just like the Florida Mayhem, they still lost. They did have less kills though, sitting at 132 and 148 for the London Spitfire. We also got to see our first look at Moth in this set. It was his debut in the Overwatch League, San Francisco Shock. They sat Dak, and I felt for Moth being put in his first Overwatch League game against the London Spitfire, he played pretty decent. Of course, it's hard to judge him on only one set, but I do think it's going to end up being an upgrade for Dak. He hit some pretty nice sleeps when he was on Ana, and it didn't really seem like he was getting picked off really too much in any of the team fights. Now let's go ahead and talk about the maps. We started off on Volskaya, and typical San Francisco Shock looked like they were going to first hold the London Spitfire. It was the last team fight. San Francisco Shock was up in numbers, and somehow they threw it and lost a point. If they would have held this, they probably would have won the map. But London Spitfire ended up taking first. And San Francisco Shock, they actually had a really good hold on second. And they stopped the Loden Spitfire from capping both points. Something that we really never see is teams in Overwatch League not capping both points on 2CP, let alone the London Spitfire. Then we swap sides, San Francisco Shock, they went on the attack, and they got first held. So, so in a map that was basically in their hands, whether they would have first held it, whether they would have just capped first and then capped second like they do in every single other game, like every team does in every game. 2CP, you always see both teams cap the points. So, San Francisco Shock choking once again, nothing new. Moving on to the next map, it was Nepal. London Spitfire ended up taking the first round pretty cleanly, 100-0. We saw Profit flex onto the Hanzo. Very interesting. Then on the second round, it actually was 99-99. Very, very close. San Francisco definitely had a chance to win the round. Unfortunately, though, London Spitfire came in clutch. Moving on to Hollywood, San Francisco Shock got a first hold onto the London Spitfire. Mainly due to Hureg doing absolutely nothing on this map, but dying over and over. But still, San Francisco Shock, they looked very good, and they got the hold off. And we moved on to the last map, Route 66. And it was another close map. We saw Bebe hit some nice shots on Widow. Specifically, there was this awesome one where we saw Hureg launch himself in the air and die. Again, Hureg basically just died all set. Nonetheless, still a nice shot from Baby Bay. And Hureg, he even got out fragged by Nomi from the San Francisco Shock. Yeah. Okay, but still Profit, Gesture, Budosin, they were able to carry the team and they took Route 66. San Francisco Shock, they looked pretty good here. Again, despite Hureg basically throwing, probably one of the worst DPS performances I've seen all season long. Please put Bird Ring in. If you guys even dare to put Hureg in against Soul Dynasty, you're gonna get freaking wrecked. So London Spitfire, stop giving Hureg some time. Cut him from the team. Find a better DPS player for in-house scrims. Okay, maybe I'm being a little too harsh, but still, it was a horrible performance, guys. Come on. If anybody watched the games, you would know. He didn't play good at all. So overall, it was still a fun and exciting set to watch. Not much more to talk about, though. Let's move on to the last one. And Valiant, Valiant, Valiant. They really are just on a slump. At the beginning of this stage, it looked like the best Western team. Now at the end of the stage, it looked like one of the worst. Sure, it was still a close game, but against a team like Boston Uprising, who was also going through a slump and not doing so well lately, and it started to seem like, you know, maybe the Los Angeles Valley aren't inconsistent. Maybe they're just not good. I definitely believe there is inner turmoil going on through the team, and not having a clear coach or just having new coaches all the time is not helping them. At this point, it kind of seems like the players might be coaching themselves or coaching each other, and that definitely sets up an environment where turmoil can be created and players might not like each other. Despite all this, Soon played pretty well in the Tracer today, and he definitely helped Valiant keep this set close. On the other hand, Striker, Dream Casper, Gams, who note, those four looked really good. Their teamwork was definitely on point. I really had some flashbacks from stage one when they were diving and just really on point together. So that's great to see out of them. Starting off on Volskaya, it was a really close map. It went back and forth. Boston took it at the end of the day, though. Moving on to Li Zhang Tower, another close one, 99-99s left and right. Valiant ended up taking it 2-1. So the series was tied up 1-1. We moved on to King's Row. This map was somewhat close. Boston capped with way more time than Valiant, and they had the chance to just cap the first tick on first, and that gave them the win, moving up 2-1 in the set. 
We moved on to Route 66. We saw Kareev come in. He looked good on the Widowmaker. He looked good on Reaper. They did their strategy that they ran the other day. And they took the map 2-1. Moving on to the very last map, Game 5. Elios, Valiant. We thought they were going to win it. They went up 1-0. But they just weren't clutch in this set. The Boston Uprising were and they took it. Overall, it was a very fun and exciting set to watch, and it kind of makes me sad that I can't call the Los Angeles Valley inconsistent anymore, because like I said earlier, at this point, they're just bad. So that was it for the games today, guys. They were very close, very fun, and exciting to watch, and tomorrow is going to be even more epic because we get to watch the Soul Dynasty take on the London Spitfire. This is going to be a great set, and it's really going to determine how Stage 2 playoffs look. As I said earlier, if London win this, they're more than likely going to make it, if they don't, they still have a chance, but it's a lot less likely. As for the Soul Dynasty, there is a small chance that they don't make it as well if they lose this, but regardless, they're still sitting in a good spot. We're also going to see the Shock take on the Outlaws, as well as Fuel taking on the Fusion. So some fun games tomorrow, I'm excited, and if you guys are new here, please do consider subscribing. I upload content like this every single day. Also, check these clips out from my stream. They were after the Overwatch League yesterday, and tonight I'm going to be streaming after the Overwatch League again. So this will give you kind of an idea of what we do. It can get pretty fun. Other than Kai Kai pretending like there's actually no problems. Like, he literally just pretended throughout this whole video they have no issues, everything's going good, and they're set. I mean, let's be honest, guys. All hail. All hail the fucking greatest. The greatest. Kai Kai, all hail. All hail, Kai Kai. Oh hell, Kai Kai! Oh hell, Kai Kai! Jesus Christ, man! Do it with me, boys. Jesse, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Against dragons, we knew that gladiators picked up Fissure and our role spot for team. There he is, the next monkey god, right there, guys. The future. This guy right here. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Right into our fucking eyes, dude. This guy, I'm telling you. The next fucking Winston God. Mark my words. This guy knows. He knows. This guy knows. He's a fucking genius. And we were like, XQC, this is your time. So as you can see, we definitely like to have fun. It's not always like this though. It's actually rarely like this. Usually it's just me sitting there answering all the questions you guys have or me analyzing the Overwatch League games. But we do love to have some fun sometimes. I love reacting to the Dallas Fuel stuff and other team stuff. It's a great time guys. So check the stream out. We'll be live at the end of the Overwatch League today, just like every other day. And thank you for watching guys. I'm out of here. Peace.